the third central issue that you have to have in any discussion of Israeli politics, Israeli society, Israeli elections, is the role of the different sectors, and particularly the religious, secular divide, and the religious parties. And once again, they played a central role. There were some interesting changes that took place. There, the, the minutia, the details of Israeli politics that are so central. We have now, what are we, our 68th year of independence as a state, the national home of the Jewish people, the implementation of Jewish sovereignty. We still don't know what the Jewish part means. We're still debating that, both within ourselves and, of course, with respect to the minorities, how that all fits together. This is an area that uh, our next speaker, Dr. Moshe Hellinger, has studied, written, and teaches. I should say that this is also an area that Bar Ilan specializes in. When I started teaching at Bar Ilan in 1982, that was a central part, it remains a central part of the political science department. That aspect of the Jewish tradition, of the Jewish political aspects, that in many ways make Israel unique and an additional level of complexity that uh, Professor Arad could add to the areas which he could have sympathy for you on, because it also is very difficult to understand. Dr. Hellinger is a very accomplished lecturer, senior lecturer in the political science department. He's very well known throughout Israel. His work includes areas like ethics, Judaism, and the state at Beit Morasha. He received his doctorate at Bar Ilan in our university, has spoken in many different areas and many different places, and um, he has also directed the Religious Secular Dialogue at, at the university and has written extensively on issues related to the army and uh, dealing with religious democratic identity, civil disobedience, and other topics. I'm glad you're able to join us. Dr. The floor is yours. Good morning to everybody. Um, I want to concentrate in this short lecture on the um, challenges to Israel, Israel's identity as a Jewish and democratic state come from different sections within the Israeli society. I won't be able to speak about all the sections in this short notice, but at least with some of the sections. And later on, I'll leave uh, two minutes uh, and I'll try, I'll try to bring my own point of view, uh, what sort of identity we need in Israel in order to tackle these challenges. First, the Israeli society is very together society. I uh, define it as a split between three cycles. The first is the, um, the majority of the Jews. Uh, within the majority, majority, the Jewish majority, then you can speak about the difference of the, between the um, elite, which is still the secular Ashkenazi turn toward the center left point of view. It's not a political elite, as we know, it isn't it wasn't like that already for a long time. It hasn't been like that for a long time since 1977 uh, when Begin went to power, but still it is the elite in economic issues, in uh, cultural, in, um, in the jurisprudence, in, the, mm -hmm. in, in other sections. And then within the Jewish, uh, the Jewish majority, then we have different sections like the Haredim, ultra-Orthodox, the religious Zionists, uh, the traditionalists, which are usually Mizrahiim, uh, not Ashkenazim, and then we have the immigrants from former Soviet Union, Ethiopia, and today also we have the social workers that came from other places. The third circle is uh, the Arab minority within Israel. So I start speaking about the uh, uh, challenges from the Arab minority in Israel for Jewish identity, uh, for Israel identity as a Jewish democratic state, and then I'll go to other challenges. The challenge posed by Israeli Arab citizens to Israel Jewish and democratic identity derives first and foremost from the weakness of the Arab sector, the low level of education, especially in professions needed in current economic reality, especially among Muslim women, the high percentage of unemployment, the many who work in professions that do not provide substantial income. All of these pose serious obstacles to the continued economic growth of Israel, which is mandatory for a stable democratic state. It is also important to note the damage to democratic values that derives from the deep inequality between men and women in the Arab sector, which is expressed 
in their repression of women in ways that are opposed to the values accepted in Western democratic states. But usually the Arab population, uh, the minority leaders of the Arab population speak about Israel that should be a democratic state, but they refer only to the, the identity of the Israeli state that won't be a Jewish state but a democratic, but they don't speak usually about their own population, which is far from being democratic, especially the Muslim one. More of the consequences for Christians, Arabs, of the growing Islamization in Arab society need to be taken into account. Like other areas in the Middle East, in Israel too, there exists a trend toward significant migration of Christians who feel threatened by their Islamic environment. This is a serious problem for Israel because the Christians are the most modern and productive part of the Arab population. Nevertheless, the most severe challenge posed by the Arab minority relates to the Jewish character of the state of Israel. This challenge derives from the long-term discrimination from the Israeli, uh, <coughs> from which Israeli Arabs have suffered in many areas. Land and housing, the distribu distribution of resources in regard to education, health, infrastructure, and so on. Government discriminations join with the prejudice of the Jewish majority, which often refrains from employing Arabs in lucrative professions of high status and in senior positions. This is not unique to Israel. We have the same problems in other places in the world, Afro-Americans in America, uh, the minority of uh, Islamic people in France came from, uh, from North Africa. We have the Turkish uh, population in Germany. But still, in Israel, it is a key issue. 20% of the society, uh, uh, doesn't, it's not treated equally, and it's a big problem. All this results in a dangerous and problematic reality. The Arabs have been the weakest group in Israel since its founding. Added to this material discrimination is the lack of respect for Arab culture in Israel, as well as the common stereotype held by many Jews of Arabs as lowly, unskilled manual laborers. I don't say that within the Arab minority there aren't prejudice against the Israeli majority, but still the majority has the strengths mm -hmm. and it should make the important move before the minority which is more weakened. The economic distress, the material and cultural discrimination contribute to the sense of alienation in very substantial parts of the Arab population of Israel. This alienation merges with the feeling that at the heart of their distress is the Jewish character of the state of Israel. From the Arab point of view, this Jewish character entails the prejudicial exclusion of Arabs and their being relegated to the status of second-hand citizens. What we learn from the research is the fact that usually the Arab leaders, in the uh, political leaders and the intellectual leaders want to annihilate Israel as a Jewish state, want Israel to be a state of all its citizens. But when you go down to the society, even the Muslim society, at least the great part of the Muslim society, the problem is not so much the character of Israel as a Jewish state, but the identification of the character of Israel as a Jewish state with the inequality between Jews and Arabs in Israel. And here will come what I want to say, that if Israel, and I, we can't say it now, and it's not certainly, if we are going to have a right-wing uh, coalition, this is not going to happen, but if Israel would have defined its Jewishness with the universalistic uh, aspects of Jewish tradition, that say, for instance, that in 36 place in the Bible and the Torah that you should treat the Jew and the Naju equally, the division of the Jewish nation uh, is the one day that all the universe will be one, that every human, human being is created in the image of God. These universalistic aspects that are within Jewish tradition, we have at the same time particularistic aspects in Jewish tradition, that Israel nation is unique, that has specific demands by God, etc. But if we are going to emphasize the universalistic aspect, and therefore because Israel is a Jewish state, it should treat Arabs, the Arab minority, equally, then I'm sure the rejection of Israel as a Jewish state by many Arabs will lower. How do I know it? That even be, without it, the only government that treated Arabs in more equally way was the Rabin government, government during 1992-95, later Paris, but less till the Rabin's assassination. And we know that at that time, 
because of political reason, because of what happened with the Oslo uh, uh, procedure, etc., because that Rabin needed the Arabs vote, because they had merits in the coalition and other reasons. But we know from polls that were done within the Arab population that the only time that the rejection within the Arab community of Israel as a Jewish state went down, in a low way it went down, was during Rabin's time. So what's the reason for that? The fact that Israel as a Jewish state is not treating Arabs in an unequal way. Okay, unequal way. The most problem is that, that the Arabs uh, pose threat to Israel identity as a Jewish state, and the, the Jewish majority, majority that almost uh, supports totally Israel as a Jewish state, with all the difficulties, what the differences, what is a Jewish state, fears the fact that Arabs are not, take, are not willing to give legitimate yeah, legitimacy to Israel as a Jewish state. This is from the Arab point of view. So there are threats to democracy, especially from economic reasons, and there are threats. And it's not only the question that of discrimination, it's also a question of culture. Usually, the one sector, left sector, usually will say that this, the discrimination, not only here, let's say, about Afro-Americans in America, the discrimination is the cause of poverty, etc. The other sector, usually the right sector, will say will see will say that the cause of this of the poverty is cultural reasons. You don't want to work hard in your tradition. You don't have the will to work hard, etc., etc. As the joke says, both sides are right. So, up to a point, it's a question of discrimination and inequality treatment. And from another point of view, it's also a question of tradition. The fact that within Arab minority there is such a big difference between Christians and Muslims give us also a, uh, uh, an indication that culturalism are important. Let's go to uh, the Jewish, and I'll say only some few things. If I'll go to the Jewish uh, 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 majority, then there are differences between the seculars and the religious. I must say like that. Today in Israel, there is a huge difference between the reality and the way we see it. We speak usually, when we speak about the Jewish majority in Israel, majority in Israel about, used to say, to speak about the majority who are seculars and the minority who are religious. This is very nice, but it doesn't have to do anything with reality. There is no secular majority in Israel. And there is no Jewish minority in Israel. Most of the Jews in Israel are secular and religious at the same time, in different ways and in different interpretation. But if I look to, uh, to the sociology of American society, and I'll try to take it from America to Israel, and I'll ask the majority of the Jews in Israel, what are they? The answer will be religious. Why the answer will be religious? Because for American sociology, if you are traditionalist, you're religious if you believe in God and you accept things from tradition. And still, you're not going every week to a church, thing like that, and you don't keep everything. You still, if you see yourself as religious, you are religious. The reform, mom, reform movement in America defines itself as religious. Most, almost everybody within the reform movement in America, in the Jew, Jewish reform movement, they don't eat kosher. In Israel, if you don't, you don't eat kosher, it's not only that you are not religious, you're not even traditionalist. Because somebody who doesn't eat kosher is not traditionalist. So in America, they are religious. In Israel, you are secular. So it's the question of how you define things. The majority of the people of the, of the Jewish population in Israel want to take from both things at the same time. They want to take from tradition things. And they like now Passover, or Yom Kippur, or Hanukkah, or other things. And you want, they want to take from the secular world the, the option to choose. They are not binding to the halakha. But in their feeling, we know that more than 65% of the Israelis believe there is good price from heaven for good deeds. And 56% believe that are, there is punishment for bad things. 9% believe in good things and not in punishment. You can explain it, I don't know how. But anyway, 65% believe in a good deed from heaven and they are secular. So, and most of the Jews in Israel want more tradition in their life. But they want, not separation of religion from state, but they want that the power of orthodoxy will be much lesser than it is today. So both things at the same time. And still there are differences. I'm an Orthodox Jew. I'm going with Kippah Shor. I used to be in Yeshivot, Haredit, in Hebron and Mir, two of the greatest Yeshivot of the world. And later on, I became religious Zionist. I listened to classical music and rock music. I'm going to cinema. If I'm going to cinema and I see a normal film, 
I'm not going according to the code of Shulchan Aruch, which is the halachic code of the Jewish. You can't see a normal film if you are really religious. So I do feel, see films. And I, and I look at the internet and I see television, etc. And like me, so many other people. And from the other side, many secular people, when they drive in their car in the Shabbat, they still feel that for them, Shabbat is a very unique and important day. They won't work in the Shabbat. They want to take the car and go to see, the, to see some places with the family. They want to go to the sea. But they feel it's Shabbat in their driving. So there are huge differences, but still it's not a majority of seculars and minority of religious. If the situation had been like that, Netanyahu wouldn't, wouldn't have been the prime minister. As long as the Labour Party, I won't say uh, this, as long as the Labour Party, one minute, as long as the Labour Party is not going to be part of this majority of Jews who see themselves as part of the Jewish tradition and speak in a Jewish way and not only in a democratic way, they are not going to, go, to come back to power. They didn't understand it during Paris in 1996. He asked why they didn't support us. We are much better for the Mizrahim. We give them a lot of money because of social justice point of view and not the Likud point of view. And they didn't understand it now, and that's the fact. But the other problem is that the majority of the Jews in Israel define the Jewishness of the state of Israel in its particularistic aspects. What are, are we are different from the non-Jews? The world hates us. And we are like a ship within all the wolves, as the sages say, et cetera, et cetera. As long as this ethnocentrism and particularistic aspect will be the dominant aspect of Judaism in traditionalist, secular, in, in religious Zionist, and Haredi, there is a great threat to Israel as a stable democratic state. So, for, and I'm concluding this sentence, in my point of view, we need to strengthen Israel both as a Jewish state, but not from the ritual aspect, but the, from the moral aspects of the Bible, etc. Justice, treating every human, be human being as equal, uh, taking some great ideas from the great prophet Isaiah, etc. And at the same time, by strengthening these aspects of Judaism, strengthen the democratic aspect of Israel. And it has consequences also the questions of the Judea and Samaria. It has different, uh, uh, you know, there are many, many implications for different sections about social justice in the society, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much.